We're going to take an in-depth look at all of the five dimensions of touch, starting with strike. I'll be showing you what's happening digitally in Equator, as well as what I'm doing physically with my hands on the Seaboard. This way, we'll be able to learn about both of them simultaneously. I want you to follow along with me, so have your Seaboard ready to go in Equator running in standalone mode, meaning I do not want you to be running Equator inside of any software for now. As I move forward, you may need to stop the video from time to time in order to navigate through things on your system, but by the time you're finished, you will have learned something and executed it as well. In short, strike is defined as the force with which a finger makes contact with a key wave. This dimension of touch corresponds to velocity on a standard MIDI controller and can be assigned to affect many parameters. Let's navigate to preset number 122 called Vintage Mono Lead and see this in action. I'm going to try and press the key wave in the exact same place each time, only varying the amount of force I use when I'm striking it. This way we can see and focus on how this one dimension of touch is working. Let's look at Strike's graphical representation. Here we see an XY axis which has a diagonal slope running through it. When I hit the key wave softly, you can see that the event, highlighted with a yellow dot, lands on the diagonal line. As I strike the key wave repeatedly from softly to hard, the yellow dot moves along the diagonal line from bottom left to top right, respectively. When I hit it harder, I'm not just getting more amplitude out of this action, the sound is changing as well. And that's where the by axis comes into play, because as I said before, strike can be assigned to affect many parameters. When we click on strike, the perimeter lights up yellow, indicating that it's currently selected. All the other parameters that strike is currently mapped to will also illuminate the same color. First off, it looks like strike is mapped to control the level of oscillator 1 up top here, and you can see that this base level is negative 3.1 dB, which is what the level will hit at the lowest strike value. And if I hover over the meter, it says negative 2.9 dB, which is what will hit at the highest velocity. Additionally, strike is mapped to the resonance on filter 1, allowing it to move between 9% and 22%, and cutoff on that same filter with a small range of 43 Hz and 40 Hz. The envelopes themselves are mapped to control other parameters, which adds another layer of complexity, which we'll dive into later, but for now, let's just look at what's happening on the surface. When I vary the force with which I hit the key wave, you can see that the harder I hit it, the more those mapped parameters will jump and vice versa. So now if that's the case, if I reverse the slope on this axis, the opposite should be true. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Click on the bottom breakpoint and pull it all the way to the top. And let's do that for the other breakpoint as well, pulling it all the way to the bottom. Now the softer I hit the key, the more modulation we encounter. And the harder I hit it, the less. Let's quickly undo the slope adjustments we made, making sure that strike is still illuminated. And let's map it to yet another parameter, this time one of the audio effects. First, let's link the left and the right sides together. And then we'll turn the base value of the feedback knob down to 10%. And we'll turn the base value of the wet knob up to 5%. Then let's hover over the feedback knob. You can see that it lights up as well, indicating that it's waiting for us to map strike to this particular parameter. I'm going to click and drag up on the feedback knob until it's up around 35%. And do the same thing with the wet knob as well, but I'll put this at around 40%. So now at the lowest velocity, we'll be at 10% feedback and 5% wet on the delay. And at the highest velocity, we'll be at 35% feedback and 40% wet. Let's hit the key wave and see if this is the case. And yes, it is. While mapping, if we wanted to set this value back to where it was, all we would have to do is double click on the arc. You can also set a negative modulation, so let's try that as well. Let's change the base value of the wet knob to 40%, and then set the modulation from there to 0%. And let's do something similar with feedback. So I'm going to double click to reset, turn the base value up, and then set the modulation as a negative amount. 
Now, when we lightly strike a key, it's up at around 40% for both parameters, and when we add more force, the sound doesn't have the same delayed effect. At this point, I want you to find another preset which appeals to you, and map strike to something or a few things if you like, and then play some patterns with velocity variations and practice your control over strike. Repeat that process a few times and see how musical you can get this one dimension of touch to be with different mappings. Just like playing a piano, the seaboard has its own action and many layers of action at that, so practice and technique are key in how much expression and control you will get out of your seaboard.